Hey, howdy everyone. We just finished our discussion about correlation. Let's and we just we're just getting started in bivariate statistics. Why don't we get into QQ plots, PP plots, and then the next lecture we'll get into linear regression. So, QQ plots. It's a very convenient methodology for being able to compare two distributions to each other. So let's give ourselves a very simple example here. We have two data sets, but very similar. I have calculated binned PDFs, so these are probabilities over intervals, for both the red, or formation A porosity, and the black, which is formation B porosity. And if you look at them, they have the same, about the same min and max. There is a little bit of noise, probably too few samples in each one of them, so there's a bit of noise within the bin PDF. You look at the CDF, you can see clearly that over the higher end values they track very close to each other, but at the lower end there's quite a bit of difference between the two CDFs. So very similar, some parts are different. How do we compare those two CDFs and PDFs to each other? Now you could just plot them and that's what we've done on this side of the screen, and that's fair enough. You could talk about how they're different from each other. The QQ plot offers a very convenient way to compare one distribution with another. It's very straightforward. The best way to explain it is graphically to look at the two CDFs and just say, I could go ahead and pick any percentile, any cumulative probability, and on that, let's say the P15, draw the line across for the red distribution, formation A, 6% is the 15th percentile, the P15. For the black distribution, we see that we have 8% for the 15th percentile. What I do is I come over here. On this axis, I got values in formation B, which is the black distribution, values in formation A, the red distribution. And I can plot 6% for the P15 versus 8% for the P15 for the black distribution. And I plot them against each other. Formation B here, formation A here, and I plot that point right there. Now all I have to do is scan across to a bunch of different percentiles. I could, if I have a lot of data, I could pick every so many. I could do every fifth percentile. I could do every percentile. If I have sparse data, I'll be constrained on which ones I have available. You could always try to do some type of interpolation between them. But one way or the other, you're going to pick enough of these percentiles and you're going to plot the points, which are just the matching of, for a given percentile, what's the value in the one data set versus the value in the other data set. And if you plot that, you'll get a PP plot. Now it's an experimental plot. You can see right here that we have specific points that are available to us. We could go ahead and try to do some type of interpolations on the CDFs and fill it in, but it'll be driven by the data directly, so they tend to look like this. They tend to have greater density in the middle, and that's because in the middle, many distributions have a steeper gradient, and so you have more samples that are available to you over a set interval. Once you get to a or at least they're closer to each other in values. Once you get to the tails, what tends to happen is things get stretched out, and so you'll see greater space at tail locations because you just don't tend to have as much data available. Over the percentiles, things are changing more quickly over those tails. Okay, so that's what a QQ plot looks like, and that's how we calculate it. Now, it's very convenient to compare two distributions with each other. It's the main use of a QQ plot is to make these types of comparisons of distributions to another. And so I gave myself, I modified the original distributions for porosity from formation A and B, red and black respectively. And what I've done is you can see from the PDF and specifically from the CDF, formation A has more variance, sufficiently, actually quite a bit more variance than the other. So, when you plot the QQ plot for the red versus black, again, what you're going to find, this is red, this is black, is that you're going to get this type of change in slope. 
the slope is going to change. The distribution, which sees less variability or less variance, will have less extent described in the QQ plot, and so the slope is shallowed if formation B has less variation than formation A. If formation A had less variability than B, you would see it would steepen, and so you can interpret a change in slope as being a change or difference in variance between the two distributions. If you have a systematic shift, the same slope, but there is a shift in the points away from the 45 degree line, it suggests that you have a shift in the central tendency. And that's what we've done here is I took two distributions with the same spread, red and black, and I shifted the black higher. You can see that it's very nicely in the CDF. So you see a shift away from 45. So the distributions were exactly the same. You would see them on the 45 degree line. If the distributions have different variances, you'll see a change in slope. If the distributions have changed differences in mean or central tendency, you will see a shift with the slope still being at the 45 degree line. You just see a shift. And of course, you can have everything as a combination. And so what I did was I shifted the B formation, the black formation from with a higher centroid or mean than the red or formation A, and I increased its variance at the same time. And so we can see the shift. So because of the fact that formation A, I'm sorry, formation B has higher values systematically, we shift up from the 45 degree line. And because it has more variability, we see a increase in extent over the y-axis for formation B. And so we see the slope increase. And if you look at the CDFs, and uh, you can confirm that that's what's happened. We shifted and we have more variance with formation B. So these are just general cues for how you interpret a QQ plot. Now they're very simple to calculate. In general, all you have to do is take both of your sample data sets and sort them. Then you're going to calculate the cumulative probabilities and you're going to match up cumulative probabilities between them. Once again, you might, if you have different number of data, you may not have the same cumulative probability cumulative probabilities available for each of the data sets, so you have to do some type of interpolation to be able to match them up. Now for this example, I've already sorted each one of the data sets so they each separately get sorted. But remember, this data is not paired. These are just two separate sample sets for well one and well two. It's not paired. So I can sort each one of them separately. You'll, you can confirm they're both in ascending order. And since the number of data in data set 1, well 1 and well 2, are equal to each other, the cumulative probabilities will be exactly the same. This right here, if we're using the tail assumption where we don't know the tails, we could use index divided by n plus 1, which we've done quite commonly in this course. So there's 10 data. The cumulative probability right here would be 1 divided by 11, 2 divided by 11, all the way up to 10 divided by 11. Okay, so it wouldn't be hard at all, but it doesn't matter really because we know these cumulative probabilities are going to be equal because the number of data are the same, so we can plot them relative to each other. Okay, go ahead, give this a shot. I'll count to three, and then I'll show you the answer. One, two, three. Okay, just as I said before, you can assign the cumulative probabilities going one over 11, two over 11, up to 10 over 11. That's, that's straightforward. All we have to do is take the porosity values at well one and plot them versus well two. 5% to 2%, 5% 2%, 6% 6% to 4%, 6% to 4%. And you can confirm that I got this right. I did it kind of quickly just now. I think I did. What do we see in general? Well, we see a change in slope indicative of the fact that we have a greater amount of variability over the porosity from well 2. We've got more extent here. Well, in the porosity well one, it's narrower range, we have less variability. I don't see a systematic shift. We might have, no, I don't, I don't think, it looks like the means are somewhat similar. There's no reason to suggest that there's a shift in that too, but of course you could calculate the summary statistics and you could check that. So that's how you calculate a QQ plot. Now what's, what's another cool thing about QQ plots? Well, I think they're pretty cool because if you think about it, 
And what they do is they provide a, you can perform a distribution transformation directly with the QQ plot. Because remember, we're matching up the percentiles. This was a specific percentile matched up with the percentile from distribution x. So y to x, random variable of distribution of the random variable y to random variable x with the distribution of random variable x. So anytime we find a value in y, we can read it off and go down, and we would be transforming variables, our, our values, from the random variable distribution y to the random variable distribution x. So we can use this graph as a distribution transform. In fact, you could fit a function, a monotonic function, increasing function, to this set of points, and it would provide you with a continuous form in order to make these transforms. So you go from x through the forward of that function qq over and across, and you would be able to get the associated y value, or transform the entire distribution the entire random variable x to y using that function. You could go in reverse and you could go from y to x by doing the inverse of that function. So it's pretty useful. We're able to move between or a QQ plot is a mapping we can use directly for distribution transformation. So it's good for com it's good for comparing two distributions with each other. And it's very good for doing tra transformations. In fact, a very common use of a QQ plot is that if you have a, a data set, a Y, and you have the associated fit Gaussian distribution, you calculate the mean and the standard deviation, and you fit the Gaussian distribution, people will often do a QQ plot. And if you line the 45 degree line, they can say, oh, this seems to be Gaussian distributed. The shape seems to match pretty well. Let me give just one other nugget about, about what we can do with these types of plots. You can actually look at the QQ plot and you might say, well, all of these values right here are very close to the 45 degree line, but we have a big departure right here. So what's that telling us? It tells us that for values of X greater than 10 and Y greater than 10, we have pretty good consistency between the two distributions, but then we have a systematic change where the distributions are departing from each other, specifically at the values less than or this part or the lower tail or however you want to describe that locations on the CDFs of both of the distributions. So that's pretty useful too. Now it's very likely that when you hear about QQ plots, somebody's going to tell you about PP plots. And we don't want you to be confused about that because they're really, really very similar to each other. Everything we've done up until now has been comparing percentile to percentile and matching associated percentiles so that we can plot them with regard to each other. That is the QQ plot. You could also compare specific values from the distribution with each other. So instead of going this way to find the value on formation A and formation B, you could go from the actual data values and match the percentiles. So for the specific porosity value 15, it's a 40th percentile in the formation B, but it's the 68th percentile in formation A. And so you would plot 48th percentile versus 68th percentile. Now the axis of a PP plot is going to be between 0 and 1 in percentiles for each one of those distributions. And so we're, we're plotting by, we're pairing by data values and we're plotting the associated percentiles with each distribution. Why is this, why do people do either or? Well, there's a little bit of um, what do you prefer, what do you understand um, better. You could compare them, you could suggest that if you think about it, a QQ plot that we had shown down here would tend to magnify the differences you often see at the tails where things start to level off. That has more of a separation. Well, a PP plot will tend to minimize what's going on at the tails. You see how those distances narrow up when you go vertically and will be more sensitive to what happens in the mode of the distribution. So that's how we often say is that the QQ plot does a better job of, it, it magnifies the differences on the tails. The PP plot will magnify the differences more in the mode or the center of the distribution. Okay, that was a very short discussion about QQ and PP plots. 
I hope that was useful to all y'all. I'm always happy to discuss. You can fire me off questions by email, Twitter, I'm the Geostats guy, or on YouTube on the channel response to videos. I'm always happy to discuss. I hope that this is useful. And um, hey, take care. See y'all.